to The Alejo Show. I want to ask you something because a lot of people think that they cannot, I mean, they are not able to learn English unless they live in America. And you are one of the examples of people who were here in Colombia the whole time learning English, studying English, and teaching English with a, a very successful uh, uh, result. And not only that, but with a good accent, because that's the other thing. People say, like, oh, I'm not going to go to the States, so I'm not going to have, like, a gringo accent or something uh, yes. like that. Well, uh, that's a very good uh, question, Alejo. So I think that many teachers can do a lot of things here in Colombia without having to travel abroad. Well, I don't have the best accent, to be honest. Well, I'm not American. I haven't lived here, as I mentioned before. But, well, I try to do my best exactly. every time. Uh, you have to be patient. Uh, sometimes, at the beginning of my videos, the, when I was studying, my accent was a bit different. If you watch my oh, really? first videos, yes. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. I mean, when you see those videos from the beginning, and what do you feel like? <laughs> oh man, I, I looked so stupid. I was so I, shy at the uh, beginning. Yeah, I was not. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. Come on, that's what you think. Like, oh, this is this is something oh. that I would never imagine I would do. And and you know, when I started my English course, because I have the the course from scratch, English exactly. course from scratch, which is a success that people yes. can go from zero to having a very respectable English. Yes, and when when I started that, even. I have problems with the audio in those videos. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And some people say, I, th I, th I thought my my left side of my headphone it, 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 was, it not, was working. not working. Because it was not uh, it was mono, it yeah, was no yeah. stereo. That's, All right. that's right, because I didn't know how to of course. deal with that. So you've been uh, teaching English um, for quite a long time. And, you know, the idea with you today is that I want you to tell me a little bit about your experience and how we can improve um, the, the, the listening and speaking skills um, because you know my subscribers are always eager to know strategies and they that's why they love this show because teachers like you come here they are like okay you should do this and this and that but one of the things we were talking before was about the cultural thing which I love I think and I don't know if you agree with me but I think you can learn English in Colombia, Peru, Brazil, whatever, you can learn good English, most of us did like that, but to really know the language, like idioms, phrasal verbs, slang, you really need to know the culture because you read it, because you watch it on TV, or because you live in a, in a, in a foreign country. Do you agree? I mean, yes, it, it, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but that doesn't mean that you do have to leave the uh -huh. country. Yeah, it's to, not an obligation. No, it's not a, like uh -uh. a requirement. Because there's other ways to take a, um, I guess, get a sneak peek at that culture, and okay. even through different materials or even through videos like yours, you you do learn about those aspects, and okay. and it's really looking at learning English as a holistic approach. So it's not that, okay, I'm going to work my pronunciation, I'm going to work on the grammar structures, but what are the differences here culturally that's going to help me um, actually be a better speaker, communicate better? Um, I actually have a little anecdote about that. I was, yeah. I was just at... I, I was going to ask you that yeah. because it, it, what we're talking can be applied with you, with exactly. your Spanish. Exactly. When you came here, did you know Spanish at all? No, so I basically knew some vocabulary. Okay. It wasn't Colombian you vocabulary. You would say like A1, A2 probably? I would say A2. Oh, okay. okay so you were not totally lost. I mean, you knew... I wasn't knew... lost, but to actually have a conversation, to okay. actually speak... No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right, no, no. So, so you came mm -hmm. here and... and I mean, you have a lot of uh, ideas and stories to tell us about what uh, the culture impacted you. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, when you came here and you you saw and you heard that Spanish that is quite different from the Spanish you got from the yes. States. It was kind of a shock over there, I guess. Yes, it was. What, what did I get myself into? I mean, that same <laughs> feeling like I, I thought I knew a little bit Spanish. Do I? Do I All actually? Right. Did I learn Spanish? So um, definitely a shock um, and a little bit like, oh, I don't I don't know if if I have to start at zero. Do I actually? <laughs> do you remember a specific point that you say like, oh, OK, this is a cultural thing. And that's why they say that this or that in Spanish. I mean, uh, I'm pretty observant. I, I think that's also part of, so I, I started to see those things, note those differences. And because um, I was fortunate enough to work 
um, at one point uh, in the States with uh, Latinos from all over. Okay. So, I mean, I got to see the what we can say are general Latino qualities and okay. then the differences, like Puerto Ricans do this oh, and yeah, Dominicans definitely. do this. Totally. And, and, you know, so um, I started to focus on that stuff to see how I could incorporate that in in the way I speak Spanish while not necessarily being a B2 yet. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, for example, it's silly things like when you go to say, uh, to, to ask a question. If I were in the mall and, okay. I, and I needed to know where I was going and I went up to a security guard, um, you know, just saying buenos dias or, okay. or, you know, good morning, it makes all the difference in the world. It, it said if I just went yeah. up to him and said, it hi, does. I need to know where this is. And Even it, without the hi, yeah. you just say like, do you know where the yeah. pharmacy is? Mm -hmm. While that's not necessarily rude in English, here it, it would be a here little bit is. more like, uh, and buenos dias to you too, good morning to you too, and you're like, So, so ah, would you consider yes. that we are very kind of polite, I guess? I oh, mean, very, we say hello. And extremely. the thing is that if I work with you, for example, I work on the seventh floor and you work on the fifth floor, and then we're running to each other, we're running to each other all the whole time, we will say hello every single oh, yes. time. Yes. Americans don't. And no. it doesn't mean that you are not polite. Exactly. It's just that, and I, I remember because when I was living in America, I used to say like, hey again, and they were like. And they look at you like. Yeah, we already said hello. Hello. Already I mean, or do I know, do <laughs> I know you? You know, when I was learning English, um, and I'm still learning English, but when I was learning back there, um, one of my situation was like I didn't want to sound like a Colombian trying to speak English. Mm -hmm. I, I was, and you know what? Now that I'm trying to learn Italian, okay, I think you also have to get that that rhythm. You know, mm -hmm. the Italian when they speak, they speak like this and whatever. And to me, that that is absolutely important. Some other teachers, even in that same seat that you're right now, have said accent doesn't matter and I said you know it does it does because it, it's, it's the difference between being Apu from the Simpsons show or being a person that speaks English exactly I mean the accent is important but you you tr and you try to learn it and you want to learn it but you shouldn't stress out if you don't okay okay that that's absolutely right I mean you you should you should try but if you don't have it yet yeah you might as well speak. Yeah, exactly. Because you're gonna get it. I mean, if you really put yourself into the into the task of learning it, you will. Okay, let's go to Saravetancur. How did you get your accent? I mean, how did you improve your accent to the point that you are now, even to have somebody from the state saying like, hey, you know what? I thought you were an American person. You know what? It's basic repetition. You, you The thing that you do when you're learning something like, you have to vocalize and you have to open your mouth and you have to repeat until you you say okay my name is i'm very happy to meet you uh -huh. it's basic repetition because and, and and also i think it's important to have someone to talk to my best friend is is well she's colombian but she's half american half italian she has a lot of half so she knows english a lot she speaks english a lot and and when i when i talk to her i i talk to her in english and i love it and it's also important to have someone else to practice with you I know think what? i'm gonna give you some trouble now because um many people um keep asking me yeah I don't have anything, anybody to practice with. Okay. You know, I'm, I live by myself. Mm -hmm. I live again. I live in La Paz, in Lima, in Buenos Aires, in in Montevideo, whatever. And most of my followers are from South America. And and you know what? I learn English, but then I go back home, and and my mother speaks Spanish to me, and my friends speak Spanish. So okay. I don't have anyone to practice to, okay. like, like you know, to try to get that. And my answer, and I don't know if you agree with me. And, you know, my answer is always, you know, you have YouTube, you have internet, mm -hmm. so you have the possibility to watch any type of show and, and keep practicing. Do you have an advice for those people who say like, I don't have, you know, my best friend, I wish she speaks English, but mm -hmm. she doesn't. What can I do? Okay. There's something that I've noticed in the past few years because now we're a global community and now Medellin has become like the center of the world and yeah. <laughs> a lot of tourists are visiting us. Uh, there are also uh, other alternatives. For example, I don't know if you've heard about the Tucan Institute. No. Nope. They, they teach Spanish to foreigners and it's right on La Diez in okay. El Colado. Um, and what they do is oh, that they yeah, have these conversation sessions. Okay. And they have uh, foreigners who want to learn Spanish and they invite people who, well, 
speak Spanish, but they also say if you speak English, it's even better because they can also you can also interact with them in in their native language, right. or you can interact with them in Spanish because they really want to learn Spanish. Okay. Because uh, I want to tell all the people listening right now, Spanish is more difficult than English. All right. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, so what about looking for these conversation sessions or these conversations clubs uh, all around the city where you can practice? They're not difficult to find. All right. I mean, you will find uh, like groups of people. We're going to be in this place at this time, this day, and we're going to just sit down and relax and have these conversations, you know, like with other people so you can mingle and meet other people from other places. And it's also really easy. And this applies to all the countries that you guys exactly. are watching. I mean, yeah. I, I bet in your cities there are a lot of places like that, cafes, exactly. uh, whatever that people, you know, gather hostels. around. They do it a lot in hostels. Hostels. Yeah. So you, you can also be a volunteer in hostel. Exactly. And you just talk to people and that would be a good a good example for you. Uh, Sara, let me go back when you traveled to America. You say it was mm. 2014. Yes. Uh, what? Which city did you visit? The city everybody visits the first time they go to the States. Miami. My, <laughs> okay, because I was I was going to ask you, like, how was that experience to be in America okay. for the first time and speaking? I, I know you, you've spoken to uh, foreign people all the time, but being there mm. and speaking with them. Because, you know, when, when a, a, a gringo or a British person comes here, they kind of you know modify their accent a little bit so we yeah. can be they can be understood but yep. what about there because they don't know that you're from colombia you, okay. you might as well look like a, from, some, somebody no, from denver you know, you know what uh, us latin americans you identify... look like somebody from seattle or something nah, no i don't uh, i i don't <laughs> for the people listening uh no but you know what the the thing is i traveled to fort lauderdale i was in fort lauderdale uh with my mom so i was my mom's official translator Um, and the thing is, when you went to this, to any place, uh, Latin Americans would identify your, not your country, but they would know you're Latin. Really? Immediately. I met a lot of Puerto Ricans, Cubans, uh, I met, I met some people from Brazil, okay. I remember. Uh, and especially in Miami, you know, it's like the melting yeah. pot of Exactly. America. I mean, everybody, everybody's okay. there. So, no, when I had to interact, that's when I felt the challenge. Because Americans, as soon as they heard you speaking English, they would go, blah, 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 blah. so you have to pay attention. Yeah, okay, okay. Did, you, did you feel like, like, oh, I didn't get that. I didn't get that word. So I'm a I, teacher. I'm, I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm supposed to understand everything, which is not true. I mean, exactly. We're not Just supposed because we're to. teachers it doesn't mean we know everything. Exactly. That's true. No, but interaction was actually really cool because okay, uh, everything I teach my students, it's happening now. So I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to uh, order some food. Okay. okay. So how do I do it? I'm going to pay for something. So like how do I do real. it? Like for real. This is for real. Yeah. I've been rehearsing this for like 13 years. I teach this to my <laughs> students. I'm able to do Now this. This is my chance to do it. Yeah, exactly. You should have record that and then show it to your students. That'll be I a good should've. exercise. I should have yeah. because it's actually like that's what we that's something that it's called. I don't remember. I, I I've heard it in a class at the at, at college. Uh, but it's basically realia. That's okay. that's the the situation where you want your. What was the to, word again? Realia. Realia. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 put in a setting which is real, and yeah. you have to use the language in a real life situation. Okay. It's not like in a classroom when everything is controlled and I'm gonna give you a grade and you can sit down and everything's okay. No, just take whatever you know and use it. Let me let me ask you something before we go to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I just had a baby. Okay. She's three months old, and um, I got this question asked all the time: like, are you going to talk to your uh, daughter English or Spanish? And since you grew up kind of with both languages, what would be your recommendation, not only to me but to everybody who's paying attention and say like, okay, I have a, a, a new baby. I kind of know Spanish and, and know English, and I would like my baby to speak both. Very good. What would be your recommendation? Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. I have a five-year-old daughter. All she's right. She's five years old, and she's lived her whole life here in Colombia, and I've spoken to her in English since she was a baby. The the the. Like the, what? What do you do? Like like you say hello, and and the mom goes says hi. So she kinds of. Um, well, the thing is, is it's and now that she's five and now she speaks she's a, a little radio you know she never stops talking <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to still speak english because she's speaking in spanish all the time of course so so it's lots of times i start answering her in spanish and so i try to remember no remember english 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 and the thing is even though she doesn't speak to me in english right she understands she understands everything i say 
But wasn't she frustrated at some point? Like, I, I don't know what you're saying. Well, obviously, she's going to say that in Spanish. Like, no te entiendo, papá. And, and you're trying to make her understand something. Isn't that, like, a little bit frustrating for a kid? Well, that's one of the amazing things about children, especially children nowadays. It's like they understand everything anyways. But right. the other thing that I do is whenever she watches a, a TV or, or, or any online um, uh, series or something like that, I always put it in English. Oh, okay. I, I never let her watch anything in Spanish. And sometimes she'll say, you know, she'll say, Papi, eh, es que no entiendo. And I'll say, well, well what Ponla you, en español, por no, favor. No, and then I'll say, what did you not understand? And she said, oh, she said this. And so I'll, I'll, re, I'll rewind a little bit and I'll explain it to her what they're saying in English in English oh, in English okay right? okay you know, to take the time and you know actually be a teacher as well as a father it's hard sometimes because we're teachers so that's, that's what we do at work is when we get home we don't want to keep on <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, our we, job we, you know not, a, not <laughs> so, at all right we want to just relax and, and do that but but it's really worth it it's really worth it for for the children and for our families if we have that knowledge okay. to give that to them and as children it's really easy for them to do that and for example I'll talk to her in English and she'll answer me in Spanish, but then we'll go somewhere and we'll meet somebody from the United States, from Canada. And from, she will say some kind and of... And boom, she'll just start speaking English. Exactly. You know, okay. She knows so that person. works a lot. Right. It does work. It does okay. Work. Um, let's go back by the time uh, to the time when you were living in, in Alaska. Okay. The first thought that comes to my mind about Alaska is being so freaking cold. <laughs> like, how could people live there? Because it's... And, and it's kind of funny because Alaska is like separated from the states and is up on the north part of Canada let would say that let's say that and and it's so freaking cold how did you live there and then knowing that you're half Colombian we're living like in the tropic was it hard well I'll give I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story to put that into context I lived there, I, we lived, until I was three, we lived on a small little island north of Kodiak, which is southeastern Alaska. Okay. And so we were in the middle of nowhere, you know, with the wind chill factor, which is, you have a temperature, say it's 10 below. Wow. But it starts getting windy, it can get to 30 below because of the wind. Jesus Christ, right? that's not human. And so in the wind chill factor would, would make it, would make it, uh, would make it very cold. But you're, because you're in Alaska, you are completely prepared all the time. Okay. There's a saying, um, I'll say it in Spanish and then in English, es mejor tenerlo y no necesitarlo que necesitarlo y no tenerlo. Exactly. That's, that should be like the Alaskan anthem. <laughs> all right. It's better to have it and not need it so like need it and not have so it. So like, for example, you, you, you might have like three coats right. in your car just right. just right. because. Right, right, exactly. So everybody, they always, you're always prepared. Of course, there are idiots that aren't, but, <laughs> but, but most everybody's always prepared and for whatever they need. And, So you really don't suffer cold. You know, you might be in a situation where you have the right jacket, but you don't have the right gloves. Okay. So you got, your fingers are really cold. All right. Or you have the right boots, but you don't have the right jacket. So your feet are warm, but you're feeling cold, you're in your body. But usually you have the right equipment and you're feeling okay. The most cold that I have ever felt in my life wasn't in Alaska. Don't tell me it, it was, was here in It was here in Colombia. No way. And it was actually here in Medellin. <laughs> no way. It was, I remember we were, we, I was with some friends. We were, it was, you know, 20 years ago. And we were riding our motorcycles. We had gone the La Vuelta Oriente. Okay. Right? You know, just a little Beo, Beo Chanta. No, just a little Beo Chanta. All right. Small motorcycles. Okay. But coming down from Guarne, I think it's El Alto de la Virgen. Oh, right. Is that what so it's called? Is that what yeah. it's called? Yeah. And this tropical storm came out of nowhere and it was just lightning and thunder and wind and rain i okay. mean torrential torrential rain and we had to stop it was so much it was so the the storm was so strong that we had to stop our motorcycles pull over to the side of the road and get like in this little uh like little hut chasita that exactly. was closed yeah, and try course. to find out which side was protect us from the wind And then you said, I'm really cold, and people were laughing like, come on, you're from Alaska. Well, you, you, I mean, no, that's your superpower. You can never be cold. <laughs> well, the, the, the truth is nobody was laughing. <laughs> everybody was as everybody cold as you. Was, exactly. Every, we thought we were, you know, and I remember thinking, this is, it's crazy because the coldest I've ever been in my life right now is this because we were completely wet. And so when you're wet, it's, that's when it's dangerous. Okay. That's when the cold is dangerous. I mean, you can be in a situation in Colombia and be wet And if you're in a paramo, for example, in uh -huh. a high mountain, 
um, if you get wet, you can get hypothermia and die. Exactly. You know, because because being wet and the wind, it's called the wind chill factor. So let's say it's two degrees, it's two degrees, it's not freezing. But because you're wet and because it's windy, you can get the effect of being, I don't know, 10 or 15 degrees below zero oh God. here in Colombia in a, in a Paramo. So that happened there. We were just wet and windy. And being wet and windy is the worst situation possible. When you were in school and you told everybody that you were Colombian, did people know about Colombia in those schools? Because when I lived in, in Minnesota, people were like absolutely, I mean, they had no idea about Colombia. Uh, they had no. They thought Shakira was from New York, and they <laughs> laugh at me when I say Shakira's from Colombia. They say that's not correct. <laughs> Did they know about Colombia when you said? Uh, would, would you say that you were from Colombia? Uh, those? No, I think days? that I think that in general, I think that in general, people um, have like the wrong idea, especially about places that are exotic. And the truth is. Both Colombia and Alaska are exotic exactly. places. Yeah, you know, they're strange. That's not places. very usual. Right, exactly. So people, the ideas they have about Alaska are people don't imagine Alaska having a city. Okay. And we lived, and I lived in a city, and I went to a normal high school, and we had a bus system, and we had shopping malls, and you know neighborhoods, and the same. Yeah, you know, like a city, like, I mean, not, like a yeah. normal North American city. And, and, and it's the same thing here. People don't imagine that Colombia has cities and, and that we have infrastructure. And I have a friend actually from, from the United States who lives here now. And he says that, that he has, you know. He thought we were Indians. No, 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 he, 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 he didn't have any expectations. But living here, he says that even we don't appreciate what we have. What we have. Like I'll say, what do you mean? He says, well, if you're in the United States and you don't have a car, It's really hard for you to go from one town to another. We can walk and we can use the metro and no, a lot and, of and going from like what he says is from in different towns. There's so ah, many okay. buses that take you to every single town in Antioquia or in Colombia. They don't have that in the United States. Yeah, that's true. That's and true. it's true. They don't. Exactly. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, there's a bus that goes to this town day after tomorrow. Okay. But here, it's what time do you want to leave? At six, at eight, at ten, at twelve? <laughs> yeah, we have you know? a lot of options over exactly. there. And so things like that, that, so people don't imagine that, that you know, we're like that. And I don't think it's that, it's that people have the wrong idea. I just think it's information. They don't have, they don't have the information. Exactly. You know, I've been uh, looking forward to having you in the show for many reasons. And one of the reasons is that um, you're a great actor. Thank That's you. one of your professions. And since you're an actor, you have to embrace a lot of different accents sometimes. And you're an expert in English and Spanish. And a lot of my students keep asking me, hey, how can I be prepared to understand accents? Because, you know, um, a person from New York might speak differently from a person from Indiana, Ohio, mm -hmm. and even Alaska. Right. Uh, so one of the thousand questions I have is, <laughs> Do Alaska? Do people from Alaska have like a very strong accent that people from like people from Colombia, uh, not native speakers, might be confused or do, no? Do they have like a very neutral. Very neutral. That's oh, okay. that's one of the cool things about Alaska is that it's one of the places that has the most neutral accents. Really? As such, the thing about Alaska, you have people from all over. You have people from all over the United States, from all over the world in Alaska. So you have different types of accents, but it's because that person comes from the place it's where a, that it's accent is. It's not like he, like he was born there and he has an accent. No, right. I mean, it's because People that are born in Alaska have very neutral accents, okay. very neutral. And what I would explain to people, to my students, because I've also been an English teacher for... Exactly. I, mean, I always say that I, I, do, I do a lot of things, but I have a list of occupations, of, of jobs that I do, but my number one job is acting. And I would say my number two job is teaching English. Exactly. And um, what I explain to people is that when you have the, when you when you when you think about accents and maybe you're nervous about this, you think, or you've traveled and you see that accents are very different and they're hard to understand. I say, yeah, okay, let's not talk about English. Let's think about Spanish. Everybody in Medellin, for example, at one time or another, drove to Cartagena with It's their him. family, right? Uh -huh. And let's say you got a flat tire in Sagún, Córdoba. Okay. Right. And so Which you, is a town uh, in, in the way, in the middle of, right, of what, the road. Right, in what we call the, the, La Tierra de Chilapos, which are the <laughs> costeños that aren't on the coast but are in, inland. Okay. And their accent is even, it's even thicker than the costeño that's on yeah, the coast. Yeah, it's even more difficult to understand. Right. So They speak so fast, they swallow words. Right, they cut them off. I always, I always say they're like the, 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 the Scots, like the, <laughs> like the Scottish of, of Spanish speakers. All right, okay. So the thing is, You have to understand that 
you, you're driving up, you have the flat tire, you've got the spare tire, and you know that they changed the tire here because they have the tire outside that says Montallantes, yeah. right? You get out, you take out the tire, and the guy who's going to change the tire comes out, Oye, what are that? Yeah, and you know, like, what? And then, and, then, that? and then you pull out the tire, and you go, ah, te acabo de llenar. Uh, uh, <laughs> sí. And then you go, chico, uh, chico, barra. Cinco what? barras, yeah. Uh, right? It's, yeah, it's, for, for the people who are watching this from Ecuador, Mexico, whatever, cuadro will be like friend. Yeah, right. And barras will be like bucks or right. dollars or whatever. Exactly. So the thing is this. It's the accent. They're speaking your own language. They're speaking Spanish, which is your native language. And it's impossible to understand what they're saying, really. Okay. You figure it out because it's, you heard cinco, so you know it's five. I'll say it's 5,000 pesos to change exactly. the tire. Exactly. Then, then okay, let's do the it. other part of the language comes out. Like, you have to... Gesticulate and do a lot of stuff. Right. Of so stuff. this happens with our native language. Okay. So it's inevitable that it's going to happen with the second language you're learning. So what I always tell people is this: this is one of the things that we, we, we don't really, we don't really take into account when when we when we when we take on the challenge of learning a language. And it's that to learn the language, we need to practice. Mm -hmm. And practice doesn't mean just talking. It means anything you can do with the language. You know, the four skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking, do all of it as much as you can. And 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 do it in a constructive way. Because some people are like, I'll put my, my cell phone in English. Okay, that's good. Because at one point you'll understand everything that the cell phone can tell you in English. Uh -huh. But then what? Okay. You know, then what do you do? For example, then then put, for, if you have like a, a phone that has voice recognition, then then start speaking in English to see if the phone understands you. Ah, oh, that would be good. You know, okay. That. And then if it doesn't, then why didn't understand me then I'll go on the, online and I'll type in the sentence I said and and I notice that it's my maybe it's my problem because exactly. I'm not doing exactly enunciation so doing that that just that that those two steps of you know doing the voice recognition seeing that the phone didn't recognize you and then going online and figuring out that's practice that's an amazing uh, gift you just gave us I mean if you want to practice your pronunciation try it with your phone and right. if your phone understands uh, the command you're given, Google or whatever, right. then you're doing a good job. Exactly. Lily, um, have you seen my YouTube channel? Yes, uh, of course. All right, all right. Of course. Because, uh, you know, I try to be as creative as I possibly can. And I came up with these characters. So I have Rocky Metallico and yes. I have, you know, all these and people. And a pirate. And a pirate <laughs> and stuff. And, and, you know, many teachers, they, they written, you know, they have written emails and stuff and they say, um, Alejo, I wish I could have your, you know, the possibility of being so creative as you are. Uh, and I, I guess one of the problems teachers feel is that I am not creative when I'm planning my class because I want to do more than just writing on the board thing. I want to do creative things. How can I, you know, increase my creativity? What would be your recommendation when that matter comes in? Because, you know, as, as I told you, many, many of my students said, oh, man, you, you did that class so funny. So how can I do a class just like you? I'm not that, you know, mm -hmm. creative and I'm not that out there. So how can I do it? What would be your recommendation for all the teachers to increase and make a class interesting, different? Okay. The first thing is, I think you, you have to do what you feel comfortable doing. All right. Okay? okay. Yeah, sure. Because if you start pretending, it's not going to fit I'm gonna you. I'm going to dress up yes. as a pirate no. because Alejo did it. No, it's not going to fit you, okay? <laughs> the second thing is, you know, Alejo, and this is, a, this is something that I want to leave out there for all, right. all of us teachers to think about. We are a community. We have many great ideas. Okay. But we we lack when we have to share. You know, I've learned many things from many, many colleagues. Okay. So when I look at other teachers, they have good activities. Yeah, sure. They have good ideas. So we just you just have to leave your comfort zone and try something. Try okay. Try something new. And if it doesn't work, because it's okay to have bad classes. It's okay if that class didn't right. work, okay? okay? Sure. So you say, okay, this didn't work for me, but something else is going to work. If you want to dress up, if you want to... But the, the important thing is to know your audience, okay? okay. For example, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm very, you know, I'm very kinesthetic. I move around and I talk with my body and, and I'm never in just, just one, one place. Just one place. Yes. 
And I had a class at six in the morning. It's six very, in the morning, yeah. It's very early. Which I have to say for my people in Mexico or Peru. It's normal. It's, it's normal yes. here in Colombia to have classes at six yes. o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh, yes. Very early in the morning. And I had a group of 10 students. And I thought. I they were like, sleepy. Yes. And, you know, and it's hard. And it's the beginning of the morning. So I was like, okay. They're I'm, cranky. I'm going to rock my class because I'm <laughs> the funniest. The, I mean, like, I move yeah. around. And I had this student who kept, like, coming late and he wasn't happy. And you could feel that yeah. he wasn't comfortable. So one day, at the end of the class, I told him, are you okay? Is something going yeah. on? <clears throat> and he told me, you know what, teacher? You move too much. Oh, no way. And I was like... So he was, <laughs> oh, okay. I have a similar story. Yeah. And, and I was like, what? And he said, like, please, lower your energy. I mean, it's... And I said, I cannot believe this. I yeah. thought I was being yeah yeah that that, that, that was what the class needed the at that time in the morning. Ever. Sure. And he said, "Please, it's too early. Just just be. I mean, like bear with us. We're just waking up." He said, "Like oh god." How far in the in the course uh, did that happen? It was like, like the first week. Oh, ah, okay. So it because, was early enough yes, to change. So I tried my best, and I told him, "Look, I'm gonna do my best, but, but I cannot." But be I also explained. I also explained. Look. This is very early. I need you to wake up. I need you to connect. And he said, okay, we're going to meet halfway. And we did great. But it was funny. But the important thing is, Alejo, you have a style, you have a personality, and you don't have to change. All right. But you do You do need to look around. And if something works for, the, for another teacher, if you have preschool, you're not going to be the same as if you have teenagers. Of course, adults. And yes. So in creativity, you can you can look up internet. They have many resources. Just look, try them. All right. And if they work, you you can make a bank of activities and if they don't work for you, it's okay. All right. So you can have, for example, let me teach the past tense. Mm -hmm. So we always do, okay, let me talk about my last vacation. And yes. And maybe the students have taken that course before and they're like, okay, I'm going to talk about my... Or I don't feel comfortable talking about my vacation because I yes. didn't do anything or uh -huh. my, my father died in the last vacation. Yeah. I don't know. So there are many, many ways to teach that subject, for example. Of course. It's really, it's really funny the story that you, that you mentioned because what happened to me is that I shake hands every beginning of the class. Hello, good morning, good morning. I shake hands. And I could feel that someone was very uncomfortable and I talked to this person and she said, I'm germophobic. So I don't like to talk, pe you know, to touch, touch people. people. So uh, I didn't know that. So you take things for granted and you say, like, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this because everybody does it. And, and that's what it, how it works. So you have to start being creative in about looking and, and, you know, for new ideas and going to other classes and checking a lot of books. And, and I, I guess that's going to be great for teachers to increase their their you know, uh, bank of resources to teach yes, classes. Definitely. Okay. One of the things or one of the problems is what do I do to get my students to talk? Because I have a group of students and I'm teaching the classes and I say, do you have any questions? Nobody talks. No uh, one. For example, how do you say this? Nobody talks. How can you make as a teacher your students to communicate with you? Okay. You mentioned something that is very important. Never Ever, when you say, do you have any questions? You are never going to get yeah, questions. Yeah, nobody's going to say, yes, I, and, I do have a question. And when you say this one, this one is better. You give a bunch of instructions. All right. And you go, did you understand? Everybody will say yes. Yes. Okay, start. At the minute you say start, you see everyone turning. What like, do like, we have to like, do? Like, but in, or that, in Spanish, ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? ¿Qué es? ¿Qué, qué or, dijo? Uh, yes. And you see this, and you go like, but I just told you. Yeah. And no one... And I asked, yes. do you have any question? Nobody because, said nothing. Because you're asking the wrong question, okay? Okay. How do you do it? You go like, okay, Alejo, step number one, what are we going to do? Uh, so you go, it doesn't matter. T tell me in Spanish or tell me in, okay. Okay, try, so, just try yes, to, you just know, try to, make yourself. Or, or just mime. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sorry. the or, or just whatever. mime. And they go and you go, and then you say it again. Okay, the first step you're going to get in groups. Oh, okay. So they go like, ah. Oh. All right. So you check. Probably they didn't get the first step. They so, didn't oh, get okay, it. okay, uh -huh. okay, groups. So All right. never, never did you understand? No, just check. Follow up questions. Ask them questions. What about do you have any questions? Okay. How would you change do that? Do you have for? any questions? No, you go like Alejo. 
Is it clear? Is it clear? Ask me something, okay? okay? Or can you explain this? Or maybe you can make them. There is something that I like very much and is I write a sentence, okay? And I write it wrong. All right. And I say, what do you see here? Is, is this correct? Is this correct? I know, teacher. No, no. Why? So, because they have questions, okay? Right, okay. But they are not going, they don't know the questions that they have. Mm -hmm.